is an analysis on effective outdoor mobile phone jamming using radio frequency channels. The paper is authored by Major RMI and Bandara and RM Monaragala. Uh, Major RMI and Bandara is a senior lecturer grade 2 in the Department of Electrical and Electronic Electrical, Electronic and Telecommunication Engineering of the KDU and his uh, research interests are robotics, mobile communication, microcontrollers and embedded systems. I now invite Major Bandara to make his presentation. Good morning, Madam. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Right, uh, first, before starting my presentation, I like to ask, please check your mobile whether is it working or not. If you have the mobile, please check that. Please check it, right? So now I'm at, because now your mobile phone is jammed. Right? So I'm not like to continue this throughout the period because in my next presentation, I will tell you the effect of this. So because of that reason, now you know the experience of this, I switch to office. Okay. My topic is that uh, analysis of effective of outdoor mobile forming jam using radio frequency channel. My topic, I divided into following subtopics uh, as shown on the screen. I'm not going to describe each of this. So, what is a mobile phone jammer? Mobile phone jammer is a, a device which blocks the communication between the mobile subscriber and the BTS. This, uh, initially, this jammer is used by the military for uh, blocking the enemy frequency, it means effective use of enemy communication. But nowadays, these mobile phone jammers are used by the civil sectors also. Like uh, this uh, court complex and sometimes in the medical facility area. Likewise, to restrict the mobile communication, so they are using this mobile communication, uh, communication jammers. I'll just give you some introduction about these existing jammers before coming on to my topic. First one is this blind jamming. Blind jamming is just a RF interference. It is nothing. It is just a RF interference made. It is a, in the military terms, we are calling it as barrage jamming. It is not con it's considering about what is uplink or what is downlink or anything. It's just jamming whatever things. It's uh, just a giving an interference. But this Intelligent cellular disturb, uh, disabler, or we can say intelligent jamming. So this is a, some kind of a jamming. This cannot done without the service provider's support. It means we can ask particular area to restrict particular numbers or particular. Uh, we can say we can we have for that we require the service provider's support. And the third one is direct receive transmit jammers. This is a, uh, some kind of a portable base station. Actually, what is this doing? If you take uh, your mobile phone, a norm normally mobile phone, what it's doing? When you switch on the mobile phone, it search the nearest BTS and it will receive the BTS signals. Normally, it says uh, normally it will receive nearly seven to eight BTS signals. But it will take the optimum one and it latch onto that particular BTS. In this type of jammers, what it's doing? It is a some kind of fall BTS. It means it's giving a high transmit output in a particular frequency and particular ARS, and I will tell you later. So that phone will detect this is a correct BTS. So it will latch onto that BTS, but call it not proceed further. It's been, it is not connecting to HLR or likewise, it will not connect him further. So, the user cannot get a call. Right. Then the th last one is this EM shield or previously the three uh, jammers which I talk is active jammers. Active jammers mean 
some kind of activation is there. But this EM shell, or sometimes we call this as a, this a Faraday cage, it is not an active jamming, it is a passive jamming. Passive jamming means there is no active component is there. So in the, uh, some kind of a cage type of shell, it will restrict the, not a, a hundred percent, it will amount some out of percent, it will restrict the uh, EM radiation coming into that cage. This is passive jamming. So this is the general link architecture of this. Here I'm not talking about the LT or 4G because in this mobile phone we cannot jam them. These are the frequencies that is used. Just uh, for your information, that there's uplink and the downlink. Uplink means the from mobile stations to the BTS. Downlink means from BTS to the mobile station. So this jammers. In my jammer, uh, this is the, uh, the design jammer, and the other jammers, most of the time, it is concentrating on the downlink. Why? Because main thing is, if we jam the uplink, it is effecting to the BTS also. So, uh, for example, if we say that we want to communicate, jam the particular area, but once we did that, we if we jam the uplink, it is effecting to the BTS. So that uh, other, other areas will get affected on that. Because of that reason, we are totally concentrating on the downlink, downlink frequencies. In Sri Lanka, we are using three types of uh, bands. One is from 900 and 1800 and 3G. So before going on to the, my proposed method, shall we look at what is this existing method? And what are the disadvantages of this existing method? In this existing method, it is just a, first one is that it will generate a triangular generator, uh, a triangular wave generator, or simply we call it as RAM generator. RAM generator is doing what? It is giving the input. Here we are using for this voltage control oscillators or VCO. VCO is what? It is we have, once we are giving the voltage into the VCO, it will emit a particular frequency according to the voltage. So. Once we give this in a triangular wave of this frame generator, what is doing? It sweeps the frequency or it's giving the range of voltages. Accordingly, VC will get, emit a particular frequencies according to that voltage. So it sweeps the bandwidth. So other thing is, if you know this, uh, this uh, RAM generator, it is something like a sawtooth. Therefore, so. In, it is uh, some kind of peak and some minimum points are there. So to get the maximum effect, we can introduce another noise. As a result, what will happen? The, uh, that uh, two voltages ranges, we can give, with this uh, noise, we can get inside part also. It means in between part also we can give. It means, for example, if we say that uh, 5 volt to 6, uh, it means 0 and 5 volt, something like that. So it means only that two frequencies will be emit from the VCO. If we can vary the voltage in between 0 and 5 in random manner, so it will generate another frequencies in that range. So that is why this noise generator is applied. So once this noise generator and the wave generator, this RAM generator, in the signal mixer, it will mix it up. Then it will directly insert to the VCO. From that, it will get it. Okay. Then we will look at what are the disadvantages of this. So, uh, there's a. Sorry, one second. Right there. What are the, the disadvantage uh, points on this? Is one thing is that these RAM generators, if we cannot restrict on the particular bandwidth. It means we cannot demarcate start point the end, end point. Because RAM generators, it is, uh, it means throughout the bandwidth, it is operating. Because of that reason, definitely, because we, uh, I had that experience, it is affecting to the uplink also. We cannot get crystal clear demarcation on the starting and ending point. We can do that, we can, for that we have to use bandpass filters. If it is so, then we will lose some part of the signal uh, uh, amplifier output for them. 